Andrew, this may look like a white sturgeon, but it doesn't. It looks black to me. They are enormous. I had caught one of these, Don. No. Yeah, I did. Oh, I remember that. But it was like it was from here, from nose. It was about it was about half this. Is that right? Yeah. Bottom feeders, hideous mouths yeah. underneath. Well, this is a small one, and it's a young one. This one's about 25 years old. Wait till you meet Herman. What's Herman? 70-year-old, 10-foot fish. 70 years of age. Oh yeah, look at him over here. Where'd he go? There's a fat one. I promise you, he's in here somewhere. Where, where is he? Herman! Doggone it. Well, anyway, he's huge, he's old, he's lived here since 1998. How would you get in there and run? Look. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing is like guy. 10 feet long. Jeez, he looks you hungry. see that, Don? Oh yeah, he looks hungry. You literally could ride that, couldn't you? Yeah, I could. And I would. How would you do it? I'd spurs and a saddle. Spurs and a saddle. Damn right. Yeah. Spurs and a saddle yeah. to ride a sturgeon. Yep, yep. The critical part of putting in a dam not only produces electricity, but it also creates a management of fish. And so here we are at the Bonneville Fish Hatchery with Brett. Brett, when we're talking about managing fish, you literally funnel the fish up the river into a special area and spawn them, right? Yeah, the fish do return back up to our hatchery here from where they were, were released. And uh, we continue the cycle of the fish propagation right here at the hatchery. So how does it all start and how does it finish? Well, it starts here. I like to start with the return of the adults back to the hatchery. And that's always in the fall. The fish will come back. They'll swim from the ocean up the Columbia River. They'll turn off into Tanner Creek come up the creek until they get to our fish ladder. They'll come up our fish ladder. And from there, we uh, take them into the building and we will process them in there. Um, we anesthetize the fish to handle them. We'll sort them by sex and species because we have more than just Chinook coming back. We also have some steelhead and coho coming back. Uh, we'll separate those. The fish that we need to keep for our brood stock, we will uh, keep in our holding ponds here until later in the fall when they ripen up. Excess fish to the program get sold to a buyer that will either go to uh, human consumption at, in uh, grocery stores, restaurants, that sort of thing. When the food quality starts to degrade where maybe it doesn't look like it would be marketable, but it's still good uh, fish flesh for human consumption, then they start going to the food bank, which is another good use for that. So there you have it from beginning to end, from spawning to harvesting, right here at the Bonneville Fish Hatchery. What I'm going to do now is scoop a few of these beautiful beasts up and find out what they weigh. And then my colleague here is going to count them and, the mate, and then they'll go down this pipe into another pond. Remember, we started with 500,000. We're moving about half of that. So there's a lot of work to do, which means I need to get fishing. Let's have a go. Good scoop. That's a lot. You see that? Okay, let's weigh them on. Okay. It's kind of tempting to pick a handful of these and just fry them up. We know we do that in Europe, you know, little baby little things like this. Delish. So we have dams and rivers. The fish have got to make it to the ocean. And one of the ways is over the dam and through the spillway, Andrew. But it's good news. You know, hydropower is clean. It can be heavily controlled and monitored. It's not going anywhere. We're doing a great job. Actually, it's pretty good news. 